Alright, here we go. Part 2 of my MMX 100% tutorial. In depth. Penguin stage. And some basic movement stuff. Uh, briefly before we get into penguin and the movement stuff, I forgot to cover one thing in the intro. So we're just gonna recap very briefly. Um, it involves the bees. You guys know this game can be pretty laggy, so um, there are lag reduction strats all over. So this is just something really simple to save a little bit of lag on the bees. And I forgot to mention it, but everybody should should know. It's pretty easy. Oops, that's not the strat. But whatever. Here is that. <clears throat> Anyways, here on the bees, when you kill a bee, there's a bunch of explosions and lag created from the dead bee. So when he's exploding, um, X walking and charging can also add to the lag. So you want to stand still. Um, oh my goodness. You want to stand still until the bee is off screen and then start moving. You don't want to stand still so long that the screen lock lifts and you're not on the right side. Um, just long enough to where you won't generate any extra lag. So I usually listen for when he hits the ground down there. Oh my goodness, this is so bad. But if you listen, boom, he hits the ground again. That's when I usually start holding right and start to charge up. Because he's all the way off screen. And the amount of lag that he generates is going to vary depending on what kind of pattern he gives you. Anyways, that, that's all I wanted to cover for the intro. Let's move on to today's topic, which is Penguin and some basic movement stuff. Um, first things first, again, as soon as you warp into the stage, just like in the intro, you want to do a little hop. It'll let you move to the right just a little bit sooner. So you do a little baby hop or a big hop, doesn't matter. You just get a little bit of movement. You won't have to worry about that in any stages after this because we'll have the dash boots. It's just these first two stages where you don't have dash boots. Um, next thing, we got this bunny rabbit here. You can either just jump over him. You also want to be charging when you come in here. You can either just jump over him and ignore him, or you can shoot him. I use this, this angular stump in the background as a cue to shoot two lemons and start my charge to take out the bunny, but it's just, it's preference. You can just jump over him and ignore him. Then I'm looking at this, this flat part here of the, the ground. Yeah, tutorial, Ganimo. And I just bought Mega Man 2 yesterday, actually. So now I'm looking at the, the flat part here. This is where I want to do a little short hop with a full charge it will go through this guy's wheel and hit him. It's a full charge and four lemons to take him out. Um, you don't have to kill this mosquito guy, but you can. I usually do. I want to take out the bunny though, because you'll it'll, it'll crash into him. Uh, if you remember from part one, in the intro, we talked briefly about slope jumps. And this stage is where they're really going to be put to use more than anywhere else. Um, here's one right here. You're walking down the slope. It's totally free. You just jump before you reach the bottom of the slope. <clears throat> um, you'll notice a big difference if I jump here versus if I jump here. And during the slope jump on the way down, you want to have a full charge ready to clip the top of this bunny as he's hopping. And that way, it'll take out both the bunnies. There's another one up here. All right, if you goof it, he's in your way, and there's no way to avoid him. So you want to do the slope jump, release the charge near the top of the bunny to take out both of them. You can move it here. Now, this, this ledge, you can't reach it from down below. You have to walk up the slope a little bit. Easy jump. And as soon as I get up here, I jump again. If you fire it low, you'll not get both the, both the chunks of wood. So 
wood, metal wood, whatever it is. Um, you'll get hit in the face. So you want to do a little hop, mash four more lemons. What you don't want to end up doing is running into this thing as you're mashing him. You want to have him dead and, and be able to jump over that without touching it because obviously if you run into it you're going to stop and it's going to be slower. And then you want to have another full charge ready for this next bunny. You can shoot him right in the ears, right at the top of the ears to take him out. It's a little tighter if you only have like a green charge, but it can still be done. And if you don't want to mess with that, you can also just take out that guy and jump over him. All three are valid, valid options, but the fastest way is going to be to take him out charge it's the easiest way and then you want to utilize there's another slope jump right we're walking down this slope you want to jump at the very bottom here and maintain that slope speed from the jump so you get to carry that slope speed a little further okay moving into the cave this is where the slope jumps are really gonna have an effect I usually look at this flat part here and just jump and shoot the bat, but you can do it whenever. Um, you want to jump here off this ledge and sort of take out these bats on the way down. You don't necessarily have to take them out, you could just walk if you wanted to. Maybe. Just shoot that one and walk. But you'll notice there's more slopes here and you want to take advantage of that, so you want to do little jumps on each slope and taking the bats out in the process so that they don't get in our way. Yo, thanks, Sleepless. I'm glad you like it. So, the idea here is that you want to get down here, get on these slopes as soon as you can. Um, this is a basic movement idea here, jumping prior to reaching a ledge that you're going off of. You don't want to just walk off, that's going to be slow. You can do some sort of pre-acceleration by jumping early and barely clearing the corner. And that will come up more later, but um, and I'll explain a little more deeply then. But here you, you want to jump off the edge and start moving down so that you barely clear this corner and then you'll get the most amount of time you can on these slopes and take out the bats along the way doing little slope jumps. You don't want to jump too high here either because you'll end up you know, just doing something like that and that's obviously slower so get on the slopes, do some short hops and just continue holding right. Um, here you have some options um, I usually just ignore that bat and shoot this rolly guy with a charge shot. Here's some more slopes. Every one of these little slopes can be taken advantage of. So, for me, I, I sort of ignore the turnaround ones. Because you can do slope jumps here, too, by turning around, jumping, and then turning back around. It's probably the fastest strat, but I ignore them because they save so little time. But if you want to go for them, by all means, go for them but I just ignore them. But if you want, so here's a slope jump here, here's another one. In order to do a turnaround slope jump, what you need to do is while you're walking up a slope, press back, jump while you're holding back so that you're walking down the slope when you jump and then turn around immediately. You'll get the extra height and the extra speed. So what it looks like at full speed is something like this. You'll do one here and another one here. But for me, personally, I just do the one. Jump again, shoot this guy. And there's a lot of guys in this section that you kind of have to look out for, but they all fall pretty quickly to mid and full charge shots. You can ignore that bat, too. This is what it looks like when I do it. Here you want to just, you want to jump just high enough to get on this thing. So you can jump, turn around immediately and jump back this way. You also want to have a charge going because that guy's going to be there. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to turn around and shoot. You'll just, you'll just miss him. 
right? You want to wall kick the ledge first. So jump, kick, and shoot. Right? Kick and then shoot so that it hits him. These bats are mostly not a problem. You might have to take some of them out. I use this one as a cue for when to start charging for that guy. Some players kill him beforehand. So I'll start charging here. Here's another potential turnaround slow jump if you want. You can do it here. Like I said, I tend to ignore these, but you can do another turnaround slow jump there. You do want to jump here though. Because if you notice, there's a rolly guy up top, and if you jump here, he'll spawn and, and roll to the right because you're on the right side of him. But if you don't do that, he'll be coming right at you when you get up to the top, and that could be a problem. So, if you just walk through here, see he's right here in my way, you don't want that. So you definitely need to jump here, whether it's a turnaround slope jump or not. Or just a regular jump. That guy up top needs to be spawned, rolling to the right, otherwise he's going to be in your way. So, take these guys out. I shoot him and start charging here, and then I'll use this as a cue. I want to jump here on this slope, and then I'll shoot to take that guy down so that he's not in your way. Things can get really out of hand here if you let them, so you want to make sure you're doing it right. Here, this jump is a must for a turnaround slope jump. You have to if you want to make it up here. Because you get that extra height from the slope jumps. So, um, what this is supposed to look like. Jump here, shoot him, turn around, slope jump, kick the ledge. It can be a little tricky. I think currently both world, re world records, the 100% and the any percent world record, both missed this first try. And ended up doing something like this. Both records, funny enough. But uh, it's pretty easy when you get used to it. And you can start doing it high, you know, get way up here and then do it. Or um, if you want to be fast, lower is better, right? So. And if you don't want to be bothered with the turnaround slope jump, you can also just go up here. You don't have to do a wall kick. So, that's this section. Ideally, you do the turnaround slope jump. Two more rolly guys in your way, both fall to charge shots. Um, this jump. Now, I look at kind of this slope, I, I want to jump somewhere on this slope while still holding right. And you'll notice that I never press left here if you look at my uh, input display. Never press left. X will turn around and kick a wall if he's close enough without you having to press into the wall. So you can just jump, kick, and then press left. If you try to press left, you might, you'll probably do something like this and not get it. Now obviously you don't need to do this, you can just do this. You can jump up on the ledge here if you want. But this is going to be the fastest way. Turn around wall kick, I guess you could call it. And usually there'll be another bat in your way right here. Um, I guess I could do the whole cave again, but usually there'll be a bat here. I shoot him and then shoot him. And now we're headed up. To the boots capsule. So, uh, I guess we'll run through the cave one time at full speed the way I do it. Just to show you what it looks like. So basically, we come down here, we take it out the bats with some short slope jumps. Charge shot takes him out, jump over that one, shoot him. Jump, kick, shoot. Bat start to charge, jump, shoot. Turn around, slope jump, shoot him, shoot him. Wall kick, shoot him. Shoot him. And boots. Um, here you can do another turnaround slope jump if you want. And now we get the boots. Now remember to hold start for text, it's way faster than holding a face button. And uh, 
we get our boot upgrade. Now before I go any further, I want to talk about some basic movement principles with dashing. Um, did I go away? Yeah, okay. We got some, we got some clean, flat ground, flattish ground here. Some space to work with. So, um, obviously, dashing is fast, right? It's the way we're gonna want to move from now on. Whenever we're dashing, and whenever we're moving, we want to be dashing. Now, um, <laughs> now. Uh, the fastest way to get around on flat ground is going to be to chain dashes and jumps, right? You don't want to, this is going to be way faster than something like this. You don't want to be doing this all over the place. This is really slow. Every time you have to repress dash, you're losing time. X is walking in between each dash, right? Um, so what you want to do is you want to get a full length dash and jump at the end of it. And you'll maintain that dash speed through the jump and then you want to dash again as soon as you land. This is going to be the fastest way to get around. All right? None of this baloney. None of this. This is slow. Long dashes, long jumps. Whenever you can. Another thing you want to do is you want to minimize the number of times you have to press dash and the number of times you jump out of a dash. That's why you want to chain long ones together. Because every time you dash jump, X stops moving for one frame. And every time you land, there's going to be some amount of time in between you landing and repressing dash. So, ideally, if you can get through a section like this and the minimal number of dash jumps, That's, that's what you want to do. So, for instance, we come back here for the Penguin Revisit. We'll have boots already when we get here. Despawn that. So, the idea is you want to get through here. You can get all the way to here in just two dashes and two jumps. Right. Rather than... Man, I need to make a save state after the capsule. Well, they almost lined up sleepless. Um, yeah, get rid of this capsule. So, it's gonna be faster than doing something like this, when you can just do... this, right? That's gonna be faster than going like this, or like this. Chain dashes and jumps together. Now you may run into sometimes when you jump a little late and you end up without the dash to jump, and that's okay, that's gonna happen. You'll, you'll iron out your timing. You also may end up like pressing dash early before you land, and you'll do a little walk. That stuff happens, but you'll get used to it. So, uh, moving on. That's just some basic flat ground movement stuff. I'll cover more climbing movement ideas probably in the next next episode. <laughs> um, just because the next one will be Quanger and there's a lot of climbing there. So I'll cover climb. There's not a lot of climbing in this stage. So anyways, you'll get your capsule. It'll do a, a little demo, right? He'll dash out here. You can hold dash during the demo and he'll dash first frame as soon as you regain control. Yeah, I'll, co I'll cover it all. Sleep plus. Um, so usually when I come out of the dash, dash capsule and it does the demo, I'm holding Y and R as soon as it does it, or as it's doing the demo, so that as soon as I regain control, I start a charge and dash right away. Yo, what up, Conster? So, um, you'll end up somewhere around here. Coming up is No Stop Hallway. It's kind of a tricky, um tricky section with some some details you might not know, so I'll try to demonstrate it. But what you want to do is you want to dash, jump, dash, jump. You can ignore this guy. You just go under him. And that's what it, you want it to look like. So, I look at, you want to jump from the very edge of here, 
with your full charge in hand. And this guy won't. You want to shoot your charge through him so that it hits both him and your peacock ostrich friend, whatever this guy is. Um, and you also want to shoot another lemon after your charge shot. You see that? Oops. So, release shoot a lemon. And then, for, for the no-stop version, you want to dash and then shoot, like, sh very shortly after the dash. And the reason for that is that when X is dashing and he shoots, you notice how his buster is out in front of him? The lemon spawns pretty far in front of him, so you can use that to your advantage by sort of depositing the lemon inside of the ostrich and the flying guy at the same time. And it'll it'll take them both out in one shot. Like that. So in order to do that, you gotta dash first and then shoot. And I miss I mess this up a lot, but it's really not that hard. You should be able to figure it out pretty quickly with some practice. But the key is to dash first and then shoot. So that the shot is sort of planted inside them. One thing I forgot to mention is that uh, Dash lemons. And dash lemons are going to be a pretty big part of the speedrun. You're going to use a lot of them. Um, regular lemons will stand here walking and do one damage. Right? We can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight shots to kill that guy with regular lemons. M meanwhile, dash lemons, while you're either dashing or in a dash jump, do two damage. So. It should only take four. One, two, three. Wow, why only three? One, two, three, four. Yeah. So, um, whenever possible, you want to be using these dash lemons to your advantage. You'll notice two shots to take that guy out, but with a dash lemon, it's dead in one. So, it's a pretty big idea. Another thing about dash lemons is that you can only have one on screen at a time. So if I dash shoot shoot, the first one will do two damage, the second one's only going to do one damage. But if I shoot a guy and then shoot another one, after that guy's been killed, this double will be dash lemons. So we'll use that a lot in some fights. Um, boss fights that we use the buster on, as well as taking out a lot of enemies with dash lemons. So, uh, another strategy if you can't figure out no stop or you just want to, uh, you know, take it easy and not worry about it, is you can do the same blue shot and a lemon on the way over, but then wall kick and shoot a green shot to take him out. Oops. So you want to do like that, and a green shot, or one more way, we'll use these dash lemons, two dash lemons, we'll take them both out. The green shot will go through and kill both of them in one, meanwhile with the dash lemons you have to do two, because dash lemons don't travel through enemies, so one, two. Um, that's a pretty simple, safe strat, beginner type strat, but the fast way is going to be the no stop hallway, like so. If I could ever do it right. Like that. Okay. Moving on, we uh, take these guys out. We just jump over this guy. We want to land on this step, this middle step, so that we can jump over this guy. We're not, we can't make it from here. That guy will get in our way, as well as the ostrich. So we want to uh, chain a couple dashes here and land on this middle step and jump right over him, like that. If you have to, you gotta let. You might have to let go of right very briefly, so that you don't clip the wall like that. But with good timing, you should never have to let go of right. Another charge shot for this guy and jump over that one. Same thing. You don't want to clip up here, so with some controlled height jumps, you should be able to make it through this whole section without ever letting go of right. And that's why we call it no stop all the way. I can show you what that looks like. See? 
Perfect. You know what up, Cough you're on? So, now that we've made it through this section, we're here. Oh my gosh. Make a safe state after the hallway. After landing here, it should only take you one dash to jump all the way over this bad boy. So you can ignore that. One more dash and a wall kick will get you right here. A dash kick, by the way. Dash kick will get you right into the mech. That's a simple strat. Let me out. <laughs> um, slightly faster, potentially. Wall kicks cost you like four frames of non-movement. Totally frozen Mega Man X for like four frames when doing a wall kick. So. Um, we can use the slope to our advantage because we get added height. Normally you can't make this, right? But if we're walking down the slope, we can get up here in one. Um, it's debatable whether it's faster or not. I think it's slightly faster just because it saves a wall kick. So, in order to do that, I usually jump right to where I want to slope jump. Boom. And then a little short hop off the pillar right into the mech. Pretty simple. Um, obviously, if you don't want to do the slope jumps, just wall kick, you'll get there. It's still pretty fast like that. Not everybody does the slope jump, but I do. So um, now we're in the mech. Dash jump onto this. Dash jump up here. Hold up and hit B to jump out of a mech. You probably know that, but. Um, dash kick off the wall. Pretty simple. Dash across the top of these, jump. <clears throat> dash, jump, you know. Use your, your basic movement ideas to get through here quickly. I usually dash off the edge here. You can jump. But I usually just dash right off of it. I'm gonna jump off of this one. I usually just dash right here. And then here's another. Um, you can either do a wall kick here and go like this. This one I think maybe saves a little more time, just by saving, because you won't have to land on this section. Um, so it saves a wall kick and a dash input. You do another slope jump to get up here. Now this next section is pretty tricky. This is the snowball section. There's a lot going on, there's a lot of different strategies to try to do it fast. Or medium fast or slow. But. Uh, a lot going on so um, if you had done the slope jump you'll be right here my strategy that I do looks like this not like that yeah. um, these guys they all have four health right one two three four. he's dead so two dash lemons one green shot in a dash lemon or um, a full charge and a regular. Okay, maybe the full charge only does two damage. Well, also doing four to snowballs. Damage values are weird. Yo, what up, potato? Um, the snowballs can be taken out with two dash lemons. One full charge will take out a snowball. Takes four regular lemons. See, damage values are weird. Why does a full charge take out a whole snowball that has four health? But it takes a full charge and two lemons to take out the same four health on a snowball thrower. I don't get it, but that's the way it is. So, um, let's just run through a few of the strategies here. Um, my strat is to I jump over him and throw a dash lemon so that it hits his first snowball thrower. And then another one on the way up to him. And then I start a charge. I start holding a charge from that lemon. And then I jump. I try to clear this guy. I want to clear all the way over that second snowball thrower. And shoot. <laughs> this is complicated. I'm going to shoot a green shot and a lemon as I clear this snowball thrower. If I could ever clear him. Because you got two guys you want to take out here. You, know, you want to take out the snowball and the snowball thrower. 
So in order to do that, I do a green shot and a lemon, followed by two dash lemons. Yeah, it's more like a damage table than a direct, like, damage values, I think. You know. So, that's kind of what mine looks like. The green shot will sometimes hit both of them. The snowball, like that. See, it only took me one lemon to finish them off. Um, ignore that charge that I keep doing. I was practicing something else. I do a lemon and a lemon. One lemon over the snowball, one lemon in his face. And then, uh, the green shot and three more lemons. These are all dash lemons, right? So, I'm waiting until the lemon hits the enemy before I fire the next lemon. Because if I try to fire... If I try to fire two dash lemons at once, it just doesn't work because the second one won't be a dash lemon. See? He still has more health left. So... Green shot lemon, lemon lemon. We'll take both of those guys out. Now here I look at jumping over this snowball. Yeah, here. Good. I want to jump over this snowball. So I want to jump from the very edge. And I want to shoot a lemon as I'm doing that. That hits him in the foot. And then I shoot another lemon as I'm jumping. Here I let go briefly of right in front of this snowball so that I can clear it easily. And I do the same thing. Two lemons. Or no, I do a green shot. That's right. <laughs> Mixing up my strats. <laughs> so, green shot, lemon, lemon, lemon. Lemon, lemon. But then I started a charge here to shoot a green shot. Because it's got a little bigger um, hitbox than this lemon. It's a little tighter to hit him with that lemon than with the green shot. That's why I do that. The green shot will hit him all the time. Whereas sometimes I'll miss with the lemon. And then I dash jump to the door. That's my strat. Now if we go back, um, there's some easier strats. You can uh, lemon, lemon, and then block this guy and just ignore these ones. And then do whatever you like through this section. Um, that one's pretty easy. It's not very slow. Tiki did it for a very long time. Probably still does. Um, this one's really free. Just gotta make sure that if you want to clear this snowball right here, you want to jump from the very edge of this. Otherwise, you're gonna crash into it. Keep that in mind. Um, another strategy, let's see, I think Baba does does it like this. He'll dash off the edge here and then use a full charge. Um, so instead of jumping from here, you just dash off and then you jump over this guy and then use a full charge which will travel through the snowball because it kills it. So it's a full charge and one lemon to take them both out. You might have to wait a little bit for your full charge to build, but it's a pretty good safe strat. It makes it pretty easy. I use it as a backup sometimes if I miss the jump off the off the pedestal. That's a good strat. Um, there's a strat we call Zam's Balls. It's much more difficult, I think, and uh, it can be pretty fast. But it's I think mine's pretty comparable, but I'll see if I can show it off. It's a full charge and a lemon here. And then you want to shoot another lemon as you're jumping up two as you're dashing across the pedestal. Oops. This is not an easy strat. <laughs> yeah, what 
setup slot. Yeah, it's a tutorial. Uh, we're getting close to the end of this one, though. Uh, that was mostly just my strat there. Um, that's not it. So full charge. No, we want the full charge. Um, that's kind of what the first part of it looks like. Now, from here, you can either do it the way I do it, where you jump over the snowballs, or you can do some lemons to kill them as well. This requires a little better timing. It might save a little time because you're letting go of right just a little bit less, but for me it's just a little too difficult. I did practice it a bunch today and it seems a lot easier than it used to. So that's, that's another way of getting through there. Another way is that if you don't want to deal with, uh, you know, trying to time your releases and stuff like that, you can also do like turnarounds like that to avoid some of these snowballs. Particularly that one. I think Sopa does it like that, or at least used to. Probably like that in Caleb's tutorial, I think. I don't know. Anytime you're traveling left when your destination is on the right is not good, so if you can, I'd avoid doing strats like, like this one. But you're not going to lose much time to it, so it's better than getting hit. So, if you have to do this to avoid getting hit, then do it, but if you can do it any other way, that's what I'd recommend. So, yes, this is what it looks like when I do it. Here, it's, it's a very simple movement thing. Um, you can dash right off this and do another dash to get to the door. It's going to be a tiny bit slower than doing a short hop straight to the door. But you look like a real dummy if you do that. <laughs> so, but that's going to be the fastest way to get there. It's one less dash input, like we talked about. Alright, boss time. But first, before we get to the boss, there's a. Uh, you could dash by double tapping right or left, right? And you can use that to make chaining dashes together much more efficient because instead of releasing and repressing your dash button, you just have to press it because you're holding right for the dash instead of um, the dash button. So you don't have to let go of it to repress it. You just press it. When this dash ends, you press it. Um, and you can sort of buffer that input on the door to get a really good pair of dashes through corridors. And that's something you'll see a lot of top runners going for. A sort of buffered double tap dash on the door closing, and then a really good dash chain. Afterwards, to make these, these corridors as silky smooth as possible. One thing you don't really want to do is jump in, in these corridors because every time X hits his head he stops moving for a frame as well so if you can like this is not going to save you a lot of time trying to jump here just because you don't have much room so in boss corridors I think the best strategy is to go for the buffer double tap with a really good chain afterwards so you want to come to this penguin fight with a full charge, ready to go. You want to release it right away. It'll hit him every time. Because Penguin always throws these ice cubes first if you don't do anything. Alright, the first thing he does is this. Every time. So, I guess, hold on. Let me, let me preface, preface this fight with, this fight is the hardest fight in the game to do fast, to do optimally. There's so many different ways that Penguin can 
bone you or throw wrenches at you or, you know, just recognizing what he's going to do or what he has the potential to do at any given moment and being prepared to react to these sorts of things is, uh, is key to this fight. So, um, if you have trouble with this fight, don't worry, it's the toughest fight in the game to do fast, to do optimally, so don't get discouraged by this fight. And in order to do it fast, you're going to have to take some risks by, you know, getting in close quarters with Penguin, and uh, you might die. You might die to the first boss in the game a few times, it's not a big deal, I, I still do it sometimes, so just be aware. And here's where we're going to take advantage of those dash lemons a bunch. So, that's not very good safe state. Um, geez, I don't know how to describe this fight. There's so much that can go on. Penguin's got a few different moves. He can jump and hang from the ceiling. He can blow ice. He can jump and hang from the ceiling again. He can spit ice chunks. He can jump at X. He can spit these ice chunks. Low ones, high ones. And he can slide. Slides are what you don't want to see. They, uh, he's invulnerable while sliding. Notice everything sinks off of him. So, those are going to cost you time, but there's nothing you can do about it. All you can do is react to what Penguin does. Um, strategies for as far as maximum damage output. Um, there's this technique we call the CFO, and it's an ode to the, the first boss of Mega Man X2, CFO, giant mechaloid or something. <laughs> uh, but uh, the idea is that we, we, we want to be far away from Penguin and shoot dash lemons at him, and use the travel time of my dash lemon to build a charge up to uh, Blue Shot, because dash lemons are going to do two damage to Penguin. As are these green shots, they also do 2 damage. Uh, the full charge blueberry here does 3, so that's going to be your highest form of damage. And these blueberries. But that's the amount of time it takes to get a blueberry built up makes it not always the best move. So, but in a lot of cases, if you can repeatedly hit him with these blueberries, it's going to be pretty good. But the CFO looks something like this. When he's way over here, I want to shoot a lemon from way over here and start my charge. But I want the lemon to hit him just after he comes off iframes. See how I was able to have a blue charge ready almost by the time he was off of iframes? That's the CFO. Effect. Now every time he slides, you should be able to build a blueberry. Every single time that he slides, there's enough time to have a blueberry ready for when he comes out of it. So, you want to have those ready. Another thing to consider, now, what you want to see from him is you want to see a lot of these um, ice sculptures with his ice breath. Because he's, he doesn't take hits down while he's in it, he, he's never invulnerable. So it's the prime opportunity to dish out a bunch of damage to him. Um, the thing about his ice sculptures though is if he has any on screen at any time, he can't do that again. So you want to see him destroy them also shortly after making them. That's not, that's not really up to you. <laughs> so, um, uh, also when he's blowing, when he's blowing those ice sculptures, you can get two shots underneath them as he's making them. A lot of times I like to get behind him while he's doing them. 
that was probably a bad time to do that. I could have done some good CFL stuff from over here while he was blowing ice sculptures. Um, if you get too close to him when you shoot him, as you just saw there, you can actually hit him the wrong way. So you gotta be aware of that if you're, if you're at low health. I'll wait till he's done, but I demonstrate. No, not if he's gonna slide. See that? He gets hit stunt towards me instead of away. That, that happens when you're too close. You can always sneak two dash lemons underneath when he's more nice. Um, yeah. There's a lot to cover in this fight. I don't really know how to best explain the strats that I do. See a potato. Double slides are terrible. So you don't want to see those. Um, in scenarios like like that, where you he's got his ice sculptures out now, you know he can't blow ice, but he can do jumps and throw sculptures at you. Or, jumps or uh, throw fuel at you. You can actually just stick to full blue charges. Like here, if he jumps, blue charge when he comes down. If he throws an ice cube, jump over the ice cube and hit him with a blue charge. The idea is you want to keep him on iframes as much as you can while also trying to get the blue charges by using CFOs. And CFOs work best the further away from Penguin you are. Another key component of this fight is, is watching his health. Um, if he gets down to say four health, you don't want to necessarily hit him with a blue shot when you can just hit him for two two damage shots and finish him off. But if he's at three health, you're gonna to want to wait until you have a blue shot to finish him off. Oops, see I let that one go early, but that should have been a blue shot. Sometimes if he's if he's blowing ice like this, I'll hang on the wall here, hoping for a jump. But if it's not a jump and it's an ice sculpture, I can still or an ice cube, I can still um, like jump in between him and his sculptures to hit him with my full charge that I built up using the CFO. See how that works. You just kind of have to be able to to know what he can do um, and be prepared. And, and so this is going to come with a lot of practice. There's not really a good way to tutorialize this fight that I can think of. Um, this thing is getting a quick penguin fight is difficult and very reaction based. Now he's at full health, so I want to hit him with two shots if I can, if he'll let me. Now, if he slides, you know, you're kind of out of luck. There, I should have been charging. Always a full charge after a slide. Now, see, see how I did that? I'll shoot a dash lemon, and if he does it, I'll dump my charge. I've started a charge already after this dash lemon, right? But if he does, if, if he does that, I can dump the charge and shoot another dash lemon that, to use my CFO strats to try to uh, push out maximum damage. 
basically I'm every time I'm sh I shoot I'm starting a new charge almost unless I know that he's you know stuck in blowing ice mode and I'm gonna be able to get another dash limit on him but I'm starting a charge every time to be prepared in case he does something where say I miss you know, I go for this dash limit and he jumps or something. I can turn around and immediately hit him with a half charge for two damage. You know? I don't know, it's just being. This fight is all about reacting and being prepared. I don't know what other better way to, uh. guide you on this fight. It's a very tough fight. Very complicated. There's a lot going on. It's just all about reacting and judging based on what he can do. Like right now I know he can't blow ice because that's one sculpture sitting there. Now he can so I'll start shooting those dash lemons again from far away. Hoping that he's blowing ice, but he never does because he's just a sliding fool. Oh, so, um, I guess that's about all I can give you for this fight. One last thing uh, is that you want to finish all fights in the game that you can, as close to the center as possible. Because after the explosion, X is going to walk to the center of the stage. And so, if you're further out in the edges of the stage, you're not going to be able to, uh, if you're going to lose time versus being in the center. So, if you can, just always think about trying to be in, in the center of the stage when you finish a fight. One last thing is the fade out. Um, after the explosion, X is going to walk to the center of the stage. On the very first frame that he starts walking, you can press start and prematurely fade out the screen. Um, it saves 20 frames because it fades out early instead of after the teleport and the jingle. And uh, one one Q that you can use if you finish the fight while standing on the ground, X will blink. Notice he blinks and then walks. So the Q I use is as he's opening his eyes after he blinks. Press start. It's a one frame trick. It saves twenty frames. So, and you'll get a soft music glitch from here on out if you get it which isn't necessarily good or bad. They're pretty easy. Another way you can do it is you can just mash. Just mash start and hope you get it. I find better luck with timing it. But other people mash it. See, I'm not getting it at all with the mash strats. Maybe it's because my mash is so bad. Yeah. I recommend timing it if you can. You got a pretty good visual cue if you're standing on the ground when you finish him. Um, if you're not on the ground, the cue will be all out of whack, but don't worry about it too much. Anyways, that wraps up part one. Uh, or part two, I guess. That was part two. Part three will be whenever I feel like doing it. Uh, we're going to move on to Kawanger stage, but we'll cover a little bit of uh, the different routes and the reasons you might do one route over the other. But uh, primarily going to focus on the Iceless route, Iceless Water Full, which was the optimal route. Now we got C3. <laughs> but I will cover text 
uh, that you can use in the other routes, ice full, water full, waterless, stuff like that. So, penguins always first though. Dash boots are there, we gotta go get them. Penguin. So, uh, anyways, till next time. Thanks for watching. Peace. Alright, I got